I want to talk to you today about the Catholic teaching that men can become God. Um, I have been falsely accused by a papist out there that uh, I don't do thorough research and uh, I lied in a bunch of other things. Um, I'm not able to crack open a book and whatever um, because I made a video, a four minute video, just a quick food for thought type of video, not intended to be a very deep study. But uh, made a video pointing out the fact that the Roman Catholic Catechism teaches that men can become gods. And the only one in the scriptures who said that ye can be as gods was Satan. So was the catechism inspired by Satan. That's what I said. Then you into huge amounts of detail, just some something, something to make people think. But uh, since I've been accused of being a liar and I can't do study, well, we're going to go into a lot more scriptures and a lot more proof from the catechism, three different catechisms actually, and um, some other proof and things like that. So it's going to be a lot more detailed study. I will give you more proof if you're not convinced that the Catholic Church teaches that men can become God. Uh, not just gods, lowercase, but God. All right. So we'll start out here with uh, the catechism, the official catechism of the Catholic Church. There it is in all of its insane stupidity and uh, I will start at the beginning I didn't put that in the other study because it's not relevant it does not prove what they're saying up here all right I'll show you what I'm talking about page number 128 and number 460 the word became flesh to make us partakers of the divine nature for this is why the word became man and the Son of God became the Son of Man, so that man, by entering into communion with the Word and thus receiving divine sonship, might become a Son of God. For the Son of God became man so that we might become God. The only begotten Son of God, wanting to make us sharers in His divinity, assumed our nature so that He made man might make men gods. Absolute total blasphemy. That is heresy. And... Um, what this uh, Brian Mercier guy of uh, Catholic Truth, he came out and he was offended in things by my video, which I imagine you would be, can't handle the truth. And he said, this is ridiculous, you know, and, and he didn't, he purposefully left out the scripture quotation there of uh, partakers of the divine nature. Um, <laughs> let's go to the scripture here and I'll, I'll show you why this uh, guy is, apparently can't grasp uh, English, the simple basic Laws of the English language. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 4 says here in the King James Bible, the true word of God for English speaking people, whereby, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Uh, partakers of the divine nature. What does that mean? The Holy Spirit of God moves within you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He reveals things to you. That's what it means. Um, you don't become God. But you have this poor guy, and he says, well, see, partakers of the divine nature means it proves what it says there in the catechism. See, that's the same thing. No, it's not. You know why? Because they're spelled differently. You cannot say that the Bible teaches that Christianity, a teaching of Christianity, is that men can become gods. And here's the scripture reference where it says, partakers of the divine nature. Uh, being a partaker of the divine nature does not make you into a god, or especially God. Right? It's two separate things. See, if you want to come out and say that the Bible plainly says what it says there in the catechism. It, it says it. It's, it's there. Um, you know, again, I'll, I'll show you this. The quote right there, highlighted in orange. Right there it says it. And down there is the other part that I read. You say, well, it's, it's basically saying the same thing. You know, it's, no, it's not. It's not. Um, let me illustrate my point here. <clears throat> Brian Mercier from Catholic Truth openly said that he's going to kill me and my wife and my son and our dog. 
You say, uh, when did he say that? Well, he basically implied it. I mean, I mean, in the show, he was very hostile towards me. So he said that he's going to kill me and my whole family and my dog. You say, well, that's, that wouldn't be fair to say. Yeah, it'd be kind of like saying that, uh, that men can become gods. And then you quote a verse of scripture that does not say anything close to that. Uh, very, talk about dishonest. That's very dishonest. Um, that is obviously a blasphemous statement in the catechism. That, that uh, the only begotten, so that we might become God, um, might make men gods. That's blasphemy. That's the words of Satan. That's what Satan says. Uh, the Lord never said that. No Christian ever said that. But the Catholic Catechism does. All right? Uh, that's a problem. But you say, well, okay, well, you're just misunderstanding because you're too dumb as a Protestant or something. Okay, let's go to another one. Um, this is page number 732 and 733. 2782, it says, We can adore the Father because He has caused us to be reborn to His life by adopting us as His children in His only Son by baptism. Eh, that's a little wrong there, but doctrinal issue. But uh, He incorporates us into the body of His Christ through the anointing of His Spirit who flows from the head to the members. He makes us other Christs. Huh? <laughs> other Christ now. Oh, okay. God indeed, who has predestinated us to adoption as his sons, has conformed us to the glorious body of Christ, so then you who, are, who have become sharers in Christ are appropriately called Christs. Again, another thing that's condemned in Scripture. We're going to see it here. But just let me show you the quotes here so that you can see it. There it is. And it continues on up to here. Trying to get this thing done correctly. And there you have it. Um, so now we're other Christ's. Uh, well, you know what? The funny thing is, last time I checked, I think Jesus Christ is God. So if we are other Christ, wouldn't that make us other gods? Well, yeah, but not really, because we don't really... Uh... You have to be careful with your wording. You see, in order to be a Bible-believing Christian, your speech should line up with the Scriptures so that you don't misquote the Lord. If the Lord says, this is what I want, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Well, you can say, believe on the Lord uh, Joseph uh, Christopher to be saved. It's close enough. No, you quote the scriptures. If it's not in the scriptures, you don't mess with it. But our theologians can write huge books, uh, you know, basically justifying their satanic doctrines. No, it's what does the Bible say? The Bible is the highest authority, unless you're a Catholic, then your church traditions, your divine traditions. Uh, how do you get divine tradition? Oh, that's right, you get it from a guy who believes he's God, the Pope. Oh, well, we have uh, our councils and things like that. And, and so all, all of us other Christs come together and, uh, you know, put our heads together and come up with new doctrines. Uh-huh. Let's uh, look about the problem with the thing of other Christs. Matthew chapter 24. People coming out and saying that we are Christ. Matthew chapter 24. I mean, you can get away with anything when you're a Roman Catholic and you keep the Bible away from people. Um, that was the whole point of bringing the Bible into the language of the common man. That's why the Catholic Church lost a lot of its power. Back in the 16th century and then continuing on up through. They're trying to get it back now by taking the Bible away from the people through their Vatican versions. The NIV, ESV, all those other ones that line up with the Nestle Alan text that's put out by the Vatican. Again, I've documented it's historical fact. It's right there on my shelf. Nestle's 27th, Nestle's 28th. I also have a 25th edition. I know what I'm talking about. I've showed them in other studies, so I won't do it here. But um, watch my real Bible version issue exposed on my secondary channel, and you'll see the proof. Um, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. 
Verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. People coming and saying that they are Christ, and they are actually deceiving many. Huh. That wouldn't be the Catholic Church now, would it? Uh, slightly. Baltimore Catechism. Right here. And to just put it out there, because I get these, I've done, shown this thing with uh, Papists, and they'll, they'll come out and they'll say, oh, we don't you know, accept that. That's just an old one or whatever else. Well, then you, right there, down at the bottom, all the imprimatur and the hillobstat and all the other stuff. Nothing objectionable. Perfectly in line with Catholic teaching. You say, what? Or just when they say that we're Christ, it just means that, not that we're Jesus, it just means that we're, you know, anointed like Christ. You know, so um, because we're, see, a Christian, see, that's another, you know, the, the word Christ or of Christ, Christian, you know, right? See, uh, no, it doesn't work that way. They're actually showing that they are another Christ, just like Jesus Christ. Here we have what we see, what we should think of. Right there. Hmm. That's page 175. You're supposed to look up there and see that pervert pedophile. And he's uh, Jesus. I mean, think about that. All these children out there. Lord only knows how many in the, into the millions, you know, and I'm saying in recent times, within the last, you know, 50, 60 years, but all the history of the Catholic Church, how many children were molested, pff, Lord only knows. Uh, it's probably too high of a number for the, uh, even the devil to remember. But you get this child, and they've been molested by this pervert priest, and it goes on all the time, okay? And they look up there and they say, what I see... The priest that molested me, but I should think of him as Jesus Christ. I wonder why so many people come out of the Catholic Church and they become atheists. And I've dealt with people that were atheists before they got saved. And I said, why were you an atheist? Well, I was raised by the Catholic Church and, and I was molested as a child. And I blamed Jesus for it. Why? Because the catechism told them to. What you see was the priest. But who really did it? Jesus. Well, the Protestants molest children too. There's Protestants that molest children. Yeah, but the Protestants, and that's very true. I had a friend commit suicide because he was molested at a Methodist uh, summer camp. So yeah, absolutely. These wicked Protestants do the same thing. Um, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I do protest Rome, so I call myself a Protestant in that sense. But uh, I'm more, you know, like to be called a heretic by the Catholic Church. But um, the problem is, Yes, Protestants, there is some child molestation goes on there too. So there's no difference between the Catholics and the Protestants in terms of that. There are child molesters in both. But the Protestants don't teach this blasphemous nonsense. They don't teach that, that there are other Christs. Catholics do. Hmm. Let's look at another one. Page 213. Christ, our high priest in heaven, the priest on earth, another Christ. There you have it. Got all the little child victims down here, you know. Another Christ. Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. The Holy Mass. Mass. The ordained priest takes the place of Christ. Right there, you see it. Page 259, just in case you're wondering. So there's that satanic bunch of nonsense. And how about the new St. Joseph First Communion Catechism given to the little children, going to their confirmation classes and whatever else? How to make a good confession so that the pervert priest can use it against you and get you to come into his uh, office and, you know, sit on his lap or something. You know, wicked perverts. The priest takes Christ's place. Really? 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 
First Timothy chapter two verse five. Let's go there. First Timothy chapter two verse five. The Bible says. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. How can you say in your satanic little book right here that the priest takes the place of Jesus Christ? You say, well, that's in reference to prayer and things and, and, and whatever else. You're confessing your sins to the pervert. You're to confess your sins to Jesus Christ. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin, all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1. Can the priest do that? Well, I can absolve your sins and things and, oh, holy child and whatever else. Yeah. Wicked, disgusting perverts. Oh, I'm another Christ. Oh, you mean another God? But we're not done yet. Not by a long shot. Show an article here. I'm going to put this up on screen. This is a picture of um, Mangalore or something like this uh, today. And you can see this guy and he's bowing down to Pope Francis. And it says underneath there, The Holy Father welcomed the Indian missionary who was freed yesterday after being held captive for 18 months by Islamist militants in Yemen. Um, and, you know, this is, there are scores of these pictures out there. People bowing down before the Pope, you know. Uh, calling him Holy Father. Go to John chapter 17, verse 11. John chapter 17 and verse 11 says, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, Jesus praying to God the Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. God is one being one person. It's called the Godhead Doctrine. Okay? In the King James Bible. No idea what the Catholic ones say. They're satanic, so you don't have to worry about those. But the concept of the Trinity with three separate persons, but they're not three separate gods. But the Father's not the Son. The Son's not the Holy Spirit. They're all one God, but they're not all one person. They're, you know, a spirit, a dove, and, and uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> what a bunch of blasphemous stupidity. But, um, why would you call a man Holy Father? Well, because, see, um, uh, well, holy in the sense of uh, you know, he sits in St. Peter's chair and, and, and they come up with all these little things and whatever else. But it goes against the scriptures. Peter was never called Holy Father. You know, the supposed first pope, he wasn't called the Holy Father. They didn't have religious titles. It's actually spoken against in the scriptures. Let me show you that. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23, verse 7 through 9. We'll start there. Verse 7, it says, And greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi, a religious title. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. That's when you see Peter, and he says, my beloved brother Paul. Brother Peter, how are you doing? Hey, brother. Hey, brother. That's the only thing that you're supposed to put before somebody's name. You see that. Never once are you seeing old, the, the reverend, most reverend, holy reverend, holy father. You know, No, those are religious titles of men, and they're very wicked. You don't ever call a man reverend, and you don't call him holy father, especially. But let's continue. Uh, verse 9, And call no man uh, your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. The Lord right here is saying, no religious titles. Obviously, you can go through the scriptures, and honor thy father and mother, and you know things like that. Fine. Um, you can call your birth parent, you know your, your dad, you can call him father. Obviously, that's fine. It's condemning religious titles. So when the Pope is there and it's the Holy Father, um, that's condemned in Scripture. Unless you have some idiot moron God that uh, wrote that, inspired the Scriptures to say that, and then later on went, eh, you know, I should probably redo that, you know, because I have a bunch of other Christs down there and, 
and uh, they're trying to work their way up to become God. So, um, you know, Pope, in other words. And so, you know, uh, if they make the right connections and do the right things and whatever, prove how sick they can be. And and so, you know, I I should probably, you know, I'll just make some new divine traditions, you know, wink, wink. And uh, then we can call them father and, and things. And uh, even though there's nobody in the scriptures that said it, but we'll just work that out later. So then your God, the God of Catholicism, contradicts himself. Here he's quoted saying certain things. Don't have the, the title Father as a religious title, but later on he kind of brought that back again. Then your God's a liar. Huh, that's interesting. I remember there was a guy, the Father of Lies. can't remember his name right now. <laughs> a little sarcastic there. Of course I know his name. Um, Acts chapter 10 how about the thing of old uh, Popey boy there, Pope Francis? How about him with the guy and he's bowing down to him and whatever? What did the uh, first Pope have to say about that? Acts chapter 10, verse 25. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. Um, you don't see anybody bowing down to anyone in this book, except for Jesus Christ. That's it. But you have a sinful man, and oh, I'm just supposed to bow down to him and whatever. You say, well, but the, the, in context, in context, it's you know, it's not just falling down at his feet; it's falling down and worshiping. What do you think the people are doing to the Pope? <laughs> Don't tell me they're just falling down just for, you know, effect or something. They're falling down and worshiping this guy that they perceive to be God on earth. Substitute for Jesus Christ. God on earth. Absolutely disgusting. But let's go and read the words of uh, Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5, and see how this lines up with the thing of uh, bowing down in front of him. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also a pope. Oh, no, it says an elder. If Peter's the head of the apostles. Why would he just say, I'm just another elder? Well, that's all. Why didn't he exert his, his uh, rightful place on the throne, you know, uh, on the rock upon which the church has been built? <laughs> no, he isn't. Jesus Christ is the rock. Very clear from Scripture. The foundation that's laid. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. The Bible talks about. He's the rock upon which the church is built. You know, they drank of that spiritual rock, the rock that followed them, which was Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible talks about, I think, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Sorry, I'm not quoting it exactly, but that's what it says. The rock is, is Jesus Christ. Unless you're a papist, and you don't have to follow the scriptures. You just go with what the pervert priest tells you to believe. But um, he's an elder. That's all Peter was. You read the entire New Testament. He's never in Rome. He's never over there. He's never exerting his dominance over anybody else. Paul rebukes him to the faith, face because he's wrong in the book of Galatians. Um, that's ridiculous. Who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. How can you take a position of pope and not be a lord over God's heritage? You can't. Everywhere the pope goes, oh, here comes the Holy Father, everybody, oh, you know, bows, you know, or whatever, whatever they do. Uh, as the pope's going by, and that's not lording over the heritage? Uh, yes, I think it is. Lording over God's heritage. Verse 4, And when the chief shepherd shall appear. Oh, that must be the Holy Father. Yeah, it is. It's called Jesus Christ. He's the chief shepherd that Paul or that Peter's writing about there. Not the Pope. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Not you wear a crown of on your head because your church goes out and murders people and takes their gold and melts it down into nice crowns and things. Um, I mean, again, 
Where in the New Testament do you see anything of them wearing special robes with gold thread and, and wearing gold tiaras on their heads? I mean, I thought girls wore tiaras, by the way, but another issue. You know, the gold scepters and walking around in their procession. Where's this stuff at in the New Testament? It's not there. It's not there at all. <laughs> Verse 5, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Oh, see, Catholic submission to the Pope. That's not what it says. An elder <laughs> there. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. <laughs> How could you not have a Pope and have the guy be this proud, you know, and you look at some of these popes that were around, you know, before Vatican II, and uh, boy, talk about pride, some of those guys. Verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourself, and God will exalt you later. Verse 7, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Um, doesn't sound much like the words of a pope to me. Kind of making himself equal to everybody else. I mean, you know, did he consult with the College of Cardinals before he wrote that? I mean, what about the, uh, you know, archbishops and things? I mean, did he talk to them first? You know, was, was he in his diocese when he wrote that? And, I mean... You know, uh, was he in the parsonage, you know, when he did that? Or, you know, did he just, you know, he wrote this right after he did transubstantiation and, you know, the whole thing and the colon, you know, stuff down and turning a cookie and wine into flesh and blood. You know, uh, oh, that's right. That's not there either. Um, hmm. The Eucharist. Uh, no, not there. Uh, auricular confession. Uh, yeah, that's not in the Bible either. Um, but, oh, he did it in front of the, the nuns and the monks. Yeah, they're not in the Bible either. Um, hmm. Um, Franciscans, Jesuits, Dominicans. Uh, no, none of that stuff. Uh, yeah. But uh, let's get back on this thing of Pope Francis for a minute. The, uh, the uh, <clears throat> Holy Father, you know. Um, this guy, I keep up with things. I watch stuff Catholics come out with, uh, conservative Catholics. And uh, they at least have enough some guts to actually call this pervert out. But um, what's one of his big stands that Francis is constantly taking about climate change? Why would a man of God that's saved uh, care about climate change? Um, you should take care of what God has created out there, you know, certainly, um, sure. But uh, to say that we're headed for a, a catastrophic sort of a thing and we have to do things to lower our carbon footprint, all this other stuff, uh, hello? A man of God that can read the word of, you know, the Bible would say, um, I think God's got it under control. God has a future kind of planned out there. We're not going to have SUVs destroying the planet. But the Pope, you know, goes right in with all the other green activists and things in the World Economic Forum and all these other devils that are coming out and saying that you have to believe that, you know, um, gas cars are warming up the planet or something like this. Why? Why doesn't he come out and say, hey, everybody, just calm down. God's got it under, under control. Let me tell you about the future. According to the book of Revelation, oh, they, you know, I don't, they don't believe in a future, you know, there. It's already kind of just symbolically happened or something. You know, there's no Antichrist coming or whatever. I mean, they, they teach that there's an anti-pope. Some of them do. Some believe that. Some don't. You know, it's in the catechism. Um, but that there would come a final uh, man of lawlessness or something. Um, and that he would set himself up to be worshipped and, and all this other stuff. But it's don't worry, it's not the pope. It's, well, it's an anti-pope kind of. And then the real, you know, Jesus comes after that or something to check out what man has built on the earth and it's wonderful and great and the Lord's so impressed. <laughs> Stupid. Um, but what about uh, Francis's pro-sodomy and transgender stuff? It's about, what, a week and a half, two weeks ago, he met with transgendered people. Uh, oh, well, he was meeting with sinners. You know, he met with sinners. I guarantee you, I promise you, he didn't tell them that they were sinners. You think I'm going to sit around 
I mean, I'm a preacher. I'm not the Pope. But you think I would sit around with a bunch of transgendered perverts? Just say, uh, I'm here to share God's message of love for you today. Uh, hey, uh, you need to stop doing that. You're, you're in sin. You're very, in very serious sin. Um, I'm not going to sit around people like that. Why would the Pope? So he's making statements, you know, they said about the uh, um, sodomite marriages and things, and, and the Pope said, well, you know, I think that we should um, certainly, you know, consider some things. He didn't just say no. <laughs> there was some cardinal came out and said, no, it's wrong. It shouldn't be this way. You shouldn't have, you know, sodomite marriages. They, they say same-sex marriages, but sodomite, use the Bible term. Um, some cardinal came out, and the Pope's calling him down for it. You're, you're you know, bringing division I thought the Catholic Church was about division. I thought the Catholic Church was the one that was saying that, uh, let's see if I can find the quote here real quick, in the First Communion Catechism. Um, let see if I can get this thing quick here, about the ladder to heaven. You have to walk up the steps. It's a process of works. Okay, the church is like a ladder to heaven. Jesus gave us only one ladder. The church is our only way to heaven. Um, the Catholic Church helps us to gain heaven, especially through the sacraments. Right there it is. Just read that to you. Right over here. You can see on the steps there it says, you know, different things. And there's Mary holding the ladder. Hold up the ladder, children. <laughs> what a bunch of nonsense. Anyway, scripture, please. Scripture. Where's the ladder to heaven in Scripture with all the different steps that you have to go up and things? There's no Scripture. Well, but it's in the writings of the theologians, and they quoted Scripture occasionally in things. Or, or they, they quote a lot of Scripture. Yeah, so does the devil. Okay? That doesn't prove anything. But... Uh, and then, of course, you know, another thing, even the president of Argentina, this wacky guy or whatever else, he came out and he said that the Pope is a, basically a socialist or a communist or something, I forget. But why? Because he supports socialist regimes. Socialism is not a New Testament thing. So uh, your Pope has a problem there. And how about, the, I'll put up a, probably a little bit of video of this, but the Pope sitting there in this... Uh, there's this immodest circus, this crazy thing, women wearing very immodest clothing and they're jumping around and dancing around and whatever and the Pope's just sitting there. Hey, yeah, this is nice. <laughs> you know. Um, I wouldn't have sat there for that. No. Get that out of here. That's filthy. You need to put some clothes on. This is wickedness. Man of God the supposed guy that sits in the throne. Hmm, we'll get to that here in a minute. And he just sits there, and he just watches this. Hmm. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's go there, shall we? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse... 3 and 4. The Bible says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Uh, what religious leader out there sits on thrones and has presidents and world leaders come and bow before him? Uh, that would be the Pope, which lines up perfectly with what the Catechism says. Ye can be as gods. Might make men gods. It's right before your face. If you're a Roman Catholic, I know you get the good little family connections and you want to be, have the good burial and the good, you know, the uh, marriage and, you know, the wedding ceremony and things like that, which is, again, there's no scripture for that. Um, 
being married by the state or, you know, whatever. That is no scripture for that. Many things aren't in scripture that the Catholic Church does, but let's not be too picky, I guess. It's too much for Catholic brains to handle. But I know that you have all the little perks that come along with being a Catholic and that leaving that would be kind of a little, you know, scary. You might actually have to live by faith. Um, ooh, you know, you don't want to do that. But you really ought to consider some of what I'm saying here. See, I, I could be smooth and talk nice and whatever else, but the Bible warns about that uh, the deceivers will come and they'll use good, you know, good words. and, and um, um, Let me go to the scripture here. I've got a lot of other things on my mind yet I need to say in the study. So, by good words and fair speech, they deceive the hearts of the simple. Um, Romans chapter 16 um, verse 18 for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but by their own or but their own belly and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple so people say well Brian you shouldn't be so offensive you shouldn't be so nasty I want you to understand what I'm saying and not to come away saying the guy's vague and ambiguous I don't really know which way he's leaning I want it to be crystal clear I am against Roman Catholicism, and I always will be. I don't hate Catholics. I love Catholics enough to tell them the truth that their system is satanic. I mean, what more proof do you need? I don't understand. You know, and I'm not going to put a big thing about this, but, you know, why do you have all the different dignitaries? They come to the Pope, and they're wearing black, and the women have to wear a veil over their face, and the Pope wears white. Oh, I'm, I know there's Catholic explanations. What's well, because they're showing it's a sort of a proper... They come up with all this stuff. But the whole point is, there's not one verse of Scripture to back that stuff up. Even Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, walking around on the earth. When did any woman come up to him with a veil? Some kind of black, she's wearing all black, and Jesus is there in his white robes. Where's it at? Even when you have... You know, truly God walking on the earth. He didn't say you have to wear special outfits to come up and visit with me. See, you can, you can go to the scriptures and you can prove almost anything you want by twisting the scriptures. Especially when you go and you say, well, the Greek word here could also be interpreted. And you just bend and conform the Bible to what you want it to say. But you go with the plain teaching of scripture and you realize, yeah, the Catholic Church, there's no basis for this. Well, they were Catholics in the first century. <laughs> uh, okay, where's the word Catholic at? Pope, Basilica, go down through the list. It's not there. No, they were not Catholics in the first century. Um, <clears throat> but you say, well, but the one thing that you're afraid to cover, Brian, is that uh, Jesus Christ said, ye are gods. So what are you going to do with that? Huh? Well, we'll uh, turn to it and look at what the Bible actually says. That's what we'll do. John chapter 10. Let's go look and see what Jesus actually meant here. What's going on? John chapter 10, verse 34 and verse 35. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, Ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken... Go down to verse 36. I'll read that yet. Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. So who's he talking about? See, Jesus is saying he's identifying himself as a spiritual being there. He's not just saying, hey, I'm a regular man. Yeah, you know, I'm not trying to judge you or whatever. No, he's saying, I'm God. I'm the Son of God that was prophesied to come into the world here. And he goes on to um, say about, you know, uh, uh, where's the thing? Okay, I'm thinking of another portion of Scripture. But um, Jesus is clearly presenting himself as God. And so they have a problem with that. And he's saying, but it says back in the Old Testament, in your law there, about ye are gods. But who was it spoken to? Psalm 82, if you want to try to use this passage of Scripture to prove that man can become gods. Um, and it wasn't just the devil that said it, it was also the Lord quoted it. So you see right there you go. Oh, uh, no. See, this is what it, you know, where 
is very important to be saved and to be born again because then the Holy Spirit can interpret and compare Scripture with Scripture. Line upon line, precept upon precept. That's what we're supposed to do. Uh, not rely on the words of men, but on the words of God. Psalm 82. Let's read the whole psalm here. It's eight verses. It's not a whole lot. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Where's the congregation of the mighty? Down here on earth? No. In heaven. I'll show you the proof. How long we judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy, deliver the poor and needy, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Now look at verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. Children of the Most High in the Old Testament? Who is that a reference to? What was Jesus saying in John chapter 10? I am the Son of God. The Son of God? Who were the children of the Most High back in the Old Testament? Sons of God. Angels. You see it? You are the children of the Most High. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children are children of the Most High. He's talking to angels. How do you know? Keep reading. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes fallen angels who kept not their first estate they came down that's what it's talking about and it's funny because you have these back in Genesis chapter 6 it talks about the sons of God came in under the daughters of men and bare mighty men and you have all these legends and things Greek mythology and whatnot where you have Zeus and I can't think of the, the woman's name but they produce a child and it's Hercules what was Zeus? Um, he's a god, according to Greek mythology. What was he in reality? He was a fallen angel. It's right there. People are worshiping fallen angels, calling them gods. That's why the Lord is saying, I said ye are gods. You're gods to the people. You're not gods to me, but you're gods to these people down there. That's what you're acting like. But you're going to die like a man. You left your first estate. You left up there. And you took, became mortal, so you're going to die like a man. And I did a whole study on that years ago. You had this uh, City of Angels or something, I think Nicolas Cage and Meg Ryan, this movie, this wicked movie, not recommending you see it, not at all. But it was about an angel that gave up his first estate so he could fornicate with this woman, and then he would die like a regular mortal man. Oh, such a beautiful love story. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, it's just thousands of years old. That's all. Verse 8, Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Jesus Christ is going to inherit the nations, not some dirty, filthy, wicked pope Okay, that sits on a throne claiming to be God. Um, so, uh, absolutely ridiculous, this you know, papist, what he said, you know, that I outright lied and whatever. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Um, the Catechism teaches that a man can become God. Roman Catholicism has taught that for centuries. People worship the Pope as God on earth. Um, I remember there was even a video clip, not going to try to find it, but I think it was George W. Bush or something, and he said that when he met with the Pope, it was like talking to God. You know? <laughs> and um, there's lots of quotes out there. I didn't have time to verify all the different quotes, but because um, I don't have all of the books on Catholicism, I have a pretty good library down here of Catholic books. Um, not against Catholics, I have those too, but I'm saying actual Catholic books. And I don't have all the ones where they were you know, quoting from and things, but there's lots of quotes out there. You can look it up online of Catholic sources where they're openly saying that yes, the Pope is God. Um, so to say that uh, the Catholic Church does not teach that, you know, that uh, man can become God, uh, well, that's not true. And this Brian Mercier guy, too, another thing that he said was that, uh, you know, we're not New Agers. And I just kind of laughed at that. And I thought, boy, you really are ignorant of your system, how corrupt it is. Because the New Age movement was partly founded by a Jesuit priest, Pierre, uh, see if I have his name here, Pierre Telhard de Chardin. My notes are over here from another video. 
Um, so uh, a Jesuit priest helped to found the New Age movement. I have the video over at my Rumble channel. I couldn't post it here on YouTube because I was banned at the time because I spoke against certain things that happened in 2020 and to 2023, essentially. Um, but yeah, the New Age movement actually comes from a Roman Catholic Jesuit priest. So um, yes, you do believe that you can become gods. You absolutely do. So um, I just want to close with a few little statements here. Um, and that is, go back to my notes here. I forgot to read this at the beginning. Okay, no, it's actually for the next study. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, a Christian man, when you read the New Testament, um, there are men that are there to, and to teach and to instruct in the Word of God. And there's a thing of, of being submissive to that man because he knows the Bible very well. Um, but when you have people bowing down to a man and when you have them calling him by the name of God, Holy Father, you're dealing with something that is far into the pages of Scripture and you need to get away from that. It's very dangerous. And uh, this Pope, um, if you are going to defend him, then there's very little hope for you. Uh, you need to come out and say that this Pope Francis is a very wicked man. He's a Jesuit. The Jesuits were banished by the Catholic Church in the 1800s. I can't remember the Pope right now. If you know, put it in the comments below. Um, but the Jesuit order was formed in the 16th century under with Ignatius de Loyola. And that's how you pronounce it in Spanish too. Ignatius, not Ignatius. That's the English way to say it. So just to put that out there, I try to say things as, you know, as they should be said. He was a Spanish man, um, a, a Basque or whatever. Uh, so, I'm trying to be accurate to the Spanish language, Ignatius. But it was formed back then as a political movement to do a counter-reformation, to get all people back under the Roman Catholic system. So, while people are falling apart and this world is falling apart, your Jesuit Pope, not just you know, Arturo Sosa, I like to call him arterial sclerosis, <laughs> Um, but not just him, not the black pope, but I'm talking the white pope, the Pope Francis. He's busy out there trying to get all the different people you know, drawn into the Catholic Church and whatever because that's the mission of the Jesuits. So the Jesuit order, what they do is they just set all your beliefs and all your holy things and whatever else, they just take it and they just go and set it off to the side and say, we have political scheming to do, you just you know, forget that. And if you're a Roman Catholic, you need to be concerned about that. Call me a heretic, hate me, whatever, put nasty comments down there, whatever else. But your church is in crisis. And don't you come off with your self-righteous arrogance pretending that you guys have it all together because you don't. You guys have some major problems right now. There's a lot of schism within your church. So you can talk about the 40,000 Protestant denominations, but at the same time, your own church is fractured and falling apart. And the lost world is watching your dirty, filthy pope as he's not taking stands against perversion and against this all this climate change stuff that's going to seek to destroy all of us financially and make our lives miserable. So, reject what I have to say, forget it, whatever else, hate the King James Bible, hate me, no personal relationship with Jesus Christ, no born-again experience, do whatever you want. But you better get a hold of this problem that is in the Vatican right now. You better start to do something to fight that. Because your filthy, wicked Pope is making a mockery out of what Christianity is supposed to stand for. So that is going to be it. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Please take heed to my words. See you in the next video.